Hey guys, Ed Bud here, and I'm back with a third update on my current half marathon training. Thanks for joining me once again, guys. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit that button. We're getting very close to 2,000 subscribers. As I get a little closer to that figure, I am gonna have a running shoe giveaway. I'll give you some more details on that very soon. So as part of my half marathon training uh, for the 2020 Gloucester Half Marathon, what I've wanted to do this time around is kind of increase my base mileage quite considerably really, um, improve that endurance over distance. So by slowly increasing the mileage each week, that's my key aim really, um, to give myself a better chance getting towards that sub one hour 30 target. Certainly my last attempt, I realized I needed to improve that stamina towards the end of the race. So I think improving that base mileage is gonna give me a good shot at that. Still want to feel strong and steady as the last miles of the half marathon race approach. So a total of 41 miles this week. I'll throw some conversions up. I know you guys like those conversions. I've been plowing as many miles as I can into the Rincon to give you a full review. That'll be coming very soon. So first session, seven miles at seven minutes 30 pace. Clocked in at about 52 minutes, 26 seconds. This effort was a, well, it felt a little tougher. My wife and I attended a wedding of my brother-in-law. It was a really, really nice event. Beautiful setting near a vineyard over towards Bristol. But certainly the body felt a little clunky and uh, didn't really kick in until about a couple of miles into this run. Lots of food, lots of enjoyment, lots of dancing are great for the mind, but perhaps not so good for the body. Not in this case anyway. Certainly this shoe's still feeling really great on foot. I've experienced no discomfort whatsoever. Very, very highly recommended so far. Next session, nine miles at my endurance pace, which is around about eight minutes per mile. I think about two thirds of the pace, in fact, was about that. I tried to be as consistent as possible. This was the run that I first ran in the Infinity Run uh, from Nike. Here it is. Um, I managed to bump into some of the club runners and together took in about 540 foot of elevation over the course of that nine mile run. Conditions were very, very wet. I think these held up really, really well. Certainly the fly knit's looking a bit little weathered already. There's lots of discoloration there. I think I'll be able to clean this up though. I don't think it's a major problem. That side, it's a shoe and it's designed to be worn on foot. It's going to get dirty. There's lots of debris around this time of year and it's just par for the course. I have to say though, great quick drying abilities of this shoe as they do come out in January. I think that um, you guys are going to enjoy that quick drying ability. The fly knit does just, it just seems to evaporate off it pretty quickly. I've been very impressed with it thus far. I think this time of year is always pretty tough on gear and equipment and clothes and things like that. It's very tough trying to get them washed, trying to get them turned around so that we can use them again. I think this one is going to be quite useful to people in those type of conditions. Yeah, fly knit's not the best in wet weather, I understand that. I've worn the Vaporfly 4% fly knit in some very, very wet, rainy conditions, but I don't mind it. I think it's better having something that's a little breathable, perhaps, if the weather's not too cold, of course. But these do dry relatively swiftly without any artificial measures. Five easier miles the next day were in the Hoka Only Any Rincons. I kept the whole run there in very moderate sort of endurance pace. Kept the heart rate down to an average of 135 beats per minute. I've noticed with the Apple Watch, having it kind of hunkered down onto your wrist a little tighter than perhaps you would normally seems to produce much better heart rate results. That aside, I am gonna to look to get myself a chest-based heart rate monitor if you have any suggestions viewers please post them down in the comments for me i'll be most appreciative really taking care on this run just to treat the body with some respect allow myself some time to recover and let the body build itself back up again really going as easy as i could within the time limit that i had following day i was hungry for more miles yet again i run commuted home in the old pegasus 35s here they are I remember when I picked these up, actually, I had kind of extinguished the original version of 35s that I had. I think I got these oh, probably about 12, no, it's probably about 13 months ago, just after I got married, in fact. And they always remind me of London, where I picked them up. But mainly using these as a casual shoe now, okay for a run commute. As soon as I got back in, I went back out in the Infinity Runs for another nine mile effort. As I looped back around the outside of the town and back into the town centre, 
I soon realised it wasn't quite as good an idea as I thought. It was the town centre, or at least the shopping centre, Christmas light switch on. So there were thousands of people everywhere. Everyone was waiting for the grand switch on. Lovely to see lots of people there, but not the best running conditions. Bah, humbug! Didn't want to come across as some sort of Scrooge, but it was impossible to try and get around everybody, so I was down to a standstill at one point. Managed to get around them though, and heading back homewards. Feeling good again in the infinity runs, no discomfort there whatsoever. And about nine miles, I think that was seven minutes, 52 per mile. So not crazy speed by any stretch of the imagination, but as I said at the start of the video, building up that mileage base very steadily over the course of the next few weeks. Next day, again, three easy miles, all I had time for. Eight minutes, four seconds per mile, ran in the Hoko Rincons. I think that shoe for me is possibly going to be more of an easier day sort of endurance type shoe. It's got that cushioning there, lots and lots of midsole cushioning. I was trying to be super easy on the legs again. Uh, ran this one, I think with an average heart rate of about 135 beats per minute. So very, very easy, very comfortable. Those miles were starting to add up. So listening to the body, making sure that I'm responsible. Don't want to push things too high. You do see people sometimes, they ratchet up the mileage very, very quickly and it can have some quite drastic effects. Got to be kind of careful. I think people always say maybe 10%, something like that. So that's what I'm kind of aiming for. Adding on some more miles each week. Got to listen to the body, treat it with respect. It's the only one we got. Next day was Saturday. Everybody loves Saturday. The only day that's better than Saturday, of course, is Friday, because that's the day before Saturday. After some gaming, a little bit in the morning, I like a bit of gaming. At the moment, I'm playing Hideo Kojima's new title, Death Stranding. I'm really enjoying that in a weird sort of almost therapeutic way, actually. I really enjoy the kind of traversing these quite beautiful landscapes, delivering parcels to people. Check it out if you are interested in that type of thing. I know not all of you will be, but it's an interesting game coming from a very different perspective to a lot of normal video game titles. So Saturday was seven miles with three miles at seven minutes per mile pace. The other four miles were at roughly seven minutes 20. It was too cold to be kind of hanging around. I say cold, Monty. Uh, Monty, one of my viewers, um, on also on Strava, I appreciate you running much colder temperatures. It makes me appreciate just how mild it is here sometimes. And props to you for getting out there every time. I know there's a few times recently where you said you've been on the treadmill and I, I lose no respect for you whatsoever going on the treadmill. Certainly props for getting out in those super cold temperatures. So ran all of these miles a tad faster on this session. I have to say though, the Infinity runs really responded well when I placed a little more effort and pace into the run. I think never before have I seen on the internet so many pictures of running shoes with screws in them. People have been experimenting, trying to uh, utilize perhaps shoes that they haven't been wearing recently um, by placing some screws in to give them a bit more traction on icy and kind of snowy terrain. That aside, another viewer, Jim O'Connor, commented to me the other day, he's over in Florida, um, I think I've been out and the temperature is about, I don't know, four or five degrees centigrade. Um, he's battling with temperatures upwards towards 30 degrees centigrade. I think he said it was about 27, 28 degrees in Florida. Uh, so stay cool, Jim. So Nike's Infinity Run can certainly handle some higher temperatures. Higher temperatures? What? I'm obsessed with the weather. Certainly Nike's Infinity Run can handle some higher paces. Seven minutes per mile pace felt really great in these, really solid. It felt controlled and the midsole kind of does give you some real spring. Oh, I shouldn't say that word. People get upset when you use the word spring in running shoes. Sorry. Sorry. It gives you some real bounce. There we go. I'm convinced now that not all React foam is the same. I don't feel that the stuff that's in this is the same as in the Zoom Fly Flyknit. Or perhaps it's the implementation or something, I don't know. It's certainly different to that in the Zoom Fly 3. It's maybe the consistency of it or something, I don't know, it's different. It does feel slightly more cushioned, slightly more forgiving, slightly more bouncy. Really don't feel the weight of it on foot. I don't know whether it's a psychological thing because of the Flyknit, um, where I'm used to wearing that in much lighter shoes like the Zoom Fly Flyknit or the Vaporfly 4%. I'm certainly very excited about that shoe, as you can probably tell, and I think you guys will be too when you get a chance to get your hands on it.
So it's seven miles total with an average pace of seven minutes, 12 seconds per mile. Overall time of the run, about 50 minutes, 32 seconds and 146 beats per minute, average heart rate. I think it did spike a little bit at some point where I got a little cold. Again, looking to get a chest strap. I think that will help things a lot. Spent most of that effort in tempo and threshold zone pace and that heart rate only just moved into that threshold zone for a few moments over the course of the run. So all promising signs of improved fitness. That wraps up the week of training for the 2020 Gloucester Half Marathon. That's occurring in January. I do have a race coming up at the end of this week and I need your help. Viewers, this race is about 75% on sand. So this is gonna be kind of quite wet sand, quite compacted. It's not gonna be dry sand by any means. It's a Western Supermare. It's the Western Supermare Christmas Cracker. Great race, medal, t-shirt, all that kind of stuff. It's a 10K effort. And as I say, about 75% of it's on sand. Now, my quandary is, which shoe do I wear? I'm really undecided as to what I should wear. Last year for this race, I wore the Zoomfly Flyknit and within a mile, my feet were kind of frozen. A lot of moisture had got in and yeah, it was very wet. It was a very windy day and quite cold temperatures as well. The wind was whipping off the sea and it was quite uncomfortable. What do you think I should wear? Please put in the comments below. A lot of you know the shoes I've got available, which are quite a ridiculous amount. Please let me know what you think might suit best. I've got a little idea in my mind of perhaps even the Pegasus Turbo 2 or the Adios 4. Let me know what you think, guys. It would mean a lot to me. I appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up like. Hit the bell for notifications and make sure you share it with all your running friends. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.